Hello, this is Dr. Scott McLean, and this is a YouTube video about implant dentistry. Our topic today will be the tapered surgical drill protocol using the Nobel Replace CC implant. The tapered drill protocol is an implant protocol based on implant length first and then width second. It's a very simple system to use. The protocol we're going to use today is the WP protocol. One, two, three, and four. So we start off first by using a precision drill, which is not in the protocol really. It's an optional drill, but it's an important drill to get you where you want to be to start the osteotomy. Then I go to the two millimeter twist drill, which is a, a drill that's going to get you your initial length. And this is going to be a, a great start to the whole osteotomy. We go to a direction indicator and take an x ray to make sure that you're online. The direction indicator post is about eight millimeters long which allows you to see angulation and also depth of the osteotomy so you can measure off nerves and sinuses and such. We're going to then start to the tapered drill so we start with a 3.5 millimeter in this case a 10 millimeter long and we're going to go sideways to the 4.3 millimeter by 10 millimeters long then the 5 millimeter by 10 millimeter long implant drill. So you can see inside the drill it has a, a hole in the end of it which allows for a dual type of uh, water cooling system. So up the middle of the implant drill, water will be kind of squirted through a cannula and then it also will be squirted on the drill outside to keep it cool. The drill will be inserted to this level here, not up here, but right here. So this length from the tip to this point is actually 1.5 millimeters longer than the stated implant length by the manufacturer. So the implant length is 10 millimeters and this is going to be 11.5. I like to test the anesthetic before I start, so I kind of give a couple pokes before we start to do the surgery, and then I'll go in and uh, flap it and get the tissue out of the way. I'm using a number 12 blade here, but you can use a 15. Cutting down to the parostium, making sure you're pushing pressure down, being very careful to go slow. And then you can see the incision line here. You need to be through that parostium to make sure that this is going to flap properly. So you take the molt in this case, which is a molt elevator put some pressure behind the molt pushing down to the ridge and the flap will actually elevate quite easily. This allows you to see the ridge for defects. You can see here in this particular case we have a defect that we're going to scoop out and clean and bone graft. So, but the anterior site is quite nice here so we're going to be placing an implant in that location. We start with the precision drill on the surgery so this helps us to get a pinpoint accurate spot. So we go through our stent making sure we're denting into the, uh, the ridge itself. Taking it out, we can actually check to make sure we're in a good location based on our CT scan. So here it looks good. I'm checking it and making sure that uh, we're in the right spot. I can go back in now and use the uh, two millimeter twist drill. And we'll take this approximately down to about eight millimeters so that we're able to place the direction indicator in next to get a kind of a look at the angulation and the depth. Those are two key words in implant dentistry, angulation and depth. So once we place the direction indicator in, this is going to tell us how far we are away from the other tooth, how deep it is, because this is eight millimeters. We can then measure down to the nerve to make sure that we're okay. After we're finished with the two millimeter twist drill, we go into the tapered drills. So we're going to use the 3.5 millimeter tapered drill, the 4.3 millimeter tapered drill, and then the 5.0 millimeter. But these are the same length, but as you go crosswise, they're going to get wider. So the 10 millimeter, once you choose 10, then you're going to go uh, to the right and start choosing larger diameters based on what implant you're going to place. During this surgery, we'll be ending on the 5.0 millimeter wide drill protocol because we're placing a 5.0 millimeter wide implant. So we start with the 3.5 shown here in the diagram. We're going to take this drill and go penetrate the ridge. We're thinking angulation and depth. It's very important to think of those two concepts because you want to stay on track because you can actually change the angulation if you don't keep the drill in the right protocol and the right uh, direction. So you have to keep on angulation. It's very important. So water's going to be coming out of the drill. Then we're going to take a drill extension here because we're bumping into the adjacent tooth. So we can make this a little bit longer by using the extension. So we'll add this on which makes it so that I can bypass hitting the tooth that's right next to the area. So it's a good way, but you have to have the ability for the patient to open wide and to be able to get this in their mouth. So we just penetrate and keep going down till the 
the mark on the drill is at the top of the ridge or wherever you're referencing. You want to make sure that this is in the same angulation. It's always good to look at the osteotomy, make sure you're on course, angulation, depth. So you can see here it's going quite nicely. So we take the 4.3 by 10 millimeter tapered drill and then we're going to penetrate the same osteotomy site to make that wider now but at the same depth and the same angulation. So we keep thinking of those two words when we're doing this. because I want this drill to be kind of pointing at the top lingual cusp which is the functional cusp of the top tooth. So look at the bone that we're collecting here and actually it's prudent to keep this bone just in case we need to put it into some other area like that back defect. So you can take this bone and kind of put it in a bone dish and add some saline, keep it cool and you'll be able to use this later on. And even if you don't use it, it's always wise to kind of keep it until you realize uh, do you need it or not. So we're going to take the, the next level which is go to the 5 millimeter. Uh, by a 10 millimeter long tapered drill. This will be your last tapered drill and then you'll assess whether you need any kind of uh, dense bone drills or bone taps. So we're going to have a regular platform on top of this implant. It's very important to realize that it's not a wide platform implant. So it has a CC connection regular platform. So I'm thinking angulation and depth again. I'm putting the back of the drill head against the upper functional cusp which is the lingual cusp and I prepare this again with the 5 millimeter by 10 millimeter long uh, tapered drill. So I'm taking this down, making sure that the top of the drill, where I marked and showed you earlier, is at the top of the ridge, because that's my reference point in this case. So we're getting close to my favorite part, which is putting the implant in. So we see the osteotomy is 5 millimeters wide by 11.5 uh, deep, because it's 1.5 longer than the implant. So we're going to tap this just because the bone feels a little bit dense and the dense bone drill really doesn't start at until 13 millimeter long. So we use a bone tap here and make sure that we're kind of having this so that the implant's going to go in and get to the 45 newtons because almost always you get that kind of great stability with this implant system unless the bone is really kind of not that good of quality. But uh, so we do the bone tap at 45 newtons making sure that you turn this down from the 800 RPM, otherwise you'll have a big surprise. If we look inside the implant, you can see the hex, the conical connection, the platform shift, which is yellow, meaning regular platform, and then the 45 degree bevel, which all helps to maintain soft tissues and bone around the implant. We're going to use a regular platform driver to seat this implant because it is a regular platform implant, even though it's a 5 millimeter wide implant. Once we take this uh, from the holder, the sterile holder, we can see that the threads and the tapered uh, tip are quite uniform and this makes it seat very, very nice. So we go to the mouth, carry it in, it stays on the carrier quite nice. We're thinking angulation and depth again. Those are the words you have to think about when you're placing implants. So the implant goes down and we're, we're getting this to seat to the nice bone level. And we can see here we're at a, a nice position. So we'll go back and we'll torque test this even though that it's uh, been in place. And it's torquing at 45 newtons, which is fantastic. We'll take an x-ray, verify that the implant is in a nice position, and that we're happy with this. We can see there's my reference point for the implant. I use the lower reference point usually so that I can place this implant and get it to a nice level for uh, when we go to restore this. We can see the platform here. We can see the, the 45 degree bevel. You can also see that the implant itself has a little bit of an osteotomy that's performed 1.5 millimeters approximately below the end of the implant. So you have to plan for this. This area right here has been prepared. So if the nerve is down below, we want to make sure that we stay away from that. So it's a very important point with this system is to plan that you're 1.5 longer. After the healing abutment's on, we put a couple sutures in, and then the patient's going to wait three months, come back, and have this beautiful implant restored. So this is Dr. Scott McLean and this has been a YouTube presentation about implant dentistry.